Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. Trevor Noah once said America is 50 countries masquerading as one do you think this is true or false if so why? Anytime I read questions that end in and why. Like this I think that some ninth grader got assigned an essay and once read it to write it for them. Can you answer that in two pages? Eight last 500 words double spaced with MLA citations please. This sounds like a starter for a history essay. It's a misconception that all 50 states are supposed to be uniform. It's from a perspective of folks that prefer a larger national government, but each state is supposed to be free to do its own thing. It's almost like we have an amendment saying this exact thing. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. Amendment I Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Amendment to a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. Amendment 3 No soldier shall, in time of peace be quartered in any house, without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Amendment 4 The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects, against unreasonable searches and seizures, shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the persons or things to be seized. Amendment v. No person shall be held to answer for a capital, or otherwise infamous crime, unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces, or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same offence to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use, without just compensation. Amendment 6 In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial, by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Amendment 7 In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury, shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States, than according to the rules of the common law. Amendment 8 Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Amendment 9 The enumeration in the Constitution, of certain rights, shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Amendment X The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. Have the Bill of Rights. I don't know why I have it pinned to my copy forward slash paste, but it's finally relevant. That's the point of a federal country, such as Austria. Belgium, Ethiopia, Germany, Malaysia, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, Switzerland or the United Arab Emirates. Edit, alright got it, defend the US equals get a bunch of up bodies. Not sure if this counts but Canada kinda feels this way too. Edit, WTF, of all my comments why is this the one that blows up? Edit 2, who tf gave me silver? Why? Of course thanks but you do know you could have spent that money elsewhere on someone who actually deserves it, right? Oh well, your choice I guess. It's even more true in Canada than in most federal countries. It's easier for provinces to trade with foreign countries than with themselves, and all provinces self-fund unlike in the US where many states depend on federal funding. Then there's my home Quebec as well. You don't even need to look at federal countries. Even hugely centralized countries can have huge regional differences. I come from Brittany, Western France. Our culture is vastly different from the rest of France. We are Celts, we have our own language, food and traditions. Southern France and Northern France are also extremely different culturally. Alsace, Pays Basque and Corsica, just like my own region, have their own specific languages and culture. And I haven't even talked about overseas territories. 
Yeah this is correct, many many countries of the world have these divisions. I think people forget that countries are just lines on a map, culturally speaking it's not correct if you're saying this is where X culture starts and where X culture begins as this guy said with France. I'm English so I can only comment on the places I've been, Lyon is culturally very different to Normandy, which are all very different to Parisians. A very interesting one is the Basque region of France as people from the Basque region would probably feel more relatable to someone from Barcelona than Paris on a cultural level. Here in England is the same, all the way down in Cornwall there's a whole different culture to say Merz's eyed language and food being big ones. So the original quote from Op is applicable to many countries around the world, I think the US is probably a bit more extreme than say France or England but to a degree it's correct everywhere because that's just how culture works. This is true of most countries. I live in Germany, but Germany isn't just one country there is a constitution, the basic law grudges east, and federal laws passed by Congress, then there are the state laws passed by the state governments. Then there are local regulations defined by the counties, cities or town governments. Bavaria, for example, is a free state. The Bavarian leaders never signed the German basic law, but stated that they would accept it if two-thirds of the rest of the German states signed it. All other German states did sign it, so the law applies to Bavaria as well. But, Bavaria still sees itself as somewhat more independent than other German states. Bavaria, for example, has a political party that is only active in that state, the CSU, that is associated with the CDU that is active in all other German states. In the current German government, the CSU has several minister positions, even though it only represents one of 16 states in the country. Federal laws are the same across the country. But things like education and schools are in the responsibility of the state, so there are differences. The states try to align them as much as possible but there are differences, because each state allocates different budgets for education. Sounds like Bavaria is German Texas. Edit, thanks for the gold. When you picture a German, you picture a person from Bavaria. When people picture an American they most likely think of a person from Texas. The whole idea is that there are 50 independent political entities under one flag, so masquerading isn't the best description, but he's not totally off base. He kind of is. I mean there are large regional differences sure but it's not like German vs Italian level differences. You could probably make an argument that it's three to four countries trying to act unified but it's kind of hard, IMO, to try to say New Mexico and Arizona are supposedly so far apart from one another that it's basically like going to another country. Sure the demographics and government change but it's not that dramatic. I feel like your view of how different countries are may be skewed. For example, travel from Germany to some areas of southeast Belgium, Waller, and you'd never know you actually aren't in Germany. From England to Scotland not much changes except the accent, but the accent in England seems to change every mile or two anyways. Edit, for fuck's sake I forgot that literally everything on Reddit has to be absolutely 100% literal down to the pixel and factual to the point of providing word definitions and citations. I need to remember to just stop posting anything to this site. Just taking the phrase United States of America literally would suggest exactly that. The word state means country forward slash nation forward slash territory organized politically under a government. America is the land mass, i.e. North America forward slash South America. So yeah, there are 50 states that are united as if they are a single one ruled under another big government, and they all happen to be in America. France is a state, and Poland is a state and Canada is a state. They just aren't among the United Ones of America. It was once common to say the United States are. Rather than the United States is. I've heard that the turning point was the Civil War. I'd recast Trevor's comment this way. 50 sovereign identities coexisting as one republic. More accurate. Don't know about US, but this is spot on for India. Languages, cuisine. Culture varies wildly throughout the country, as you travel from one state to another. The closest analogy to India is probably Europe with respect to diversity in culture. Didn't realize it was applicable to US. India is definitely way way more heterogeneous though. People like to lump the people of India together as one ethnicity forward slash group when really the differences are massive. I knew a few Indians from the south and they all spoke different mother tongues than each other despite living within a hundred or so miles of each other. I lived in Tay for a year. White British but by the end I knew my way around. 
What I found interesting is that by the end there were a few circumstances where I was able to fit in better than someone from North India. In the South Hindi is at best the third language behind the regional language, for example, Tamil Inte, and English. So I could typically communicate better, plus I knew a few words of Tamil. I was also familiar with the food, which is very different to what you get in say Delhi. Let's not beat about the bush, I stuck out like a sore thumb. But I am reminded of a funny moment near the end where I went to the local cafe, ordered my usual with a word to the waiter, not what it was called on the menu but the usual slang for it, and settled down to eat. Meanwhile a guy walks in to sit at the next table, hasn't a clue what to order and isn't quite sure how best to eat it when it arrived. Didn't take much to know he wasn't from round these parts. It's not. India is much more diverse than the US is. Comparing India and the US creates a very interesting question of measuring diversity. The US has a much wider gap of diversity, such as having immigrant communities from all corners of the globe. Whereas India is filled with different ethnic groups that have been in the region for generations. India is much more fractured than the US, with various ethnic groups struggling for political power. But the US has more ethnic groups spread out across the various cities and states. Honestly I wouldn't call one more diverse than the other, but diverse in different ways. True. You compare Assam, Rajastha, J and K and Kerala, you wouldn't believe you're in the same country. This is sometimes even true for the states that share borders with each other.